So let's look at all the different constraints that we have in Motion Builder. So you can create a constraint by right-clicking in, in the navigator, insert constraint, or in the asset browser in templates, constraints. You can see them all here and you can drag and drop them into the scene. So I'm first going to create a uh, skeleton roots, make that a bit bigger. pivots, geometry offset, and increase the scale of that cube. <coughs> so notice that I don't scale uh, the actual scaling value here on the transform because that would scale the object itself. I'm just scaling the visual representation, the model, and not the, the object itself, which is just a normal habit when you do 3D modeling, right? You always freeze the scale of your object so it ends up being uh, one, one, one. This way the scale of my bone and the scale of my cube are the same. So if I need to constrain the scaling uh, of the cube to the, the bone, um, I won't have any pop or any offset um, by default. So imagine the cube is like my my model that I need to uh, constrain to the, to the bone in different ways. So back to the asset browser. Constraint. So the most important one is the parent child. So you can drag and drop that into your scene. And now in constraint in the navigator, I see that child. So usually I recommend uh, renaming it. So I do parent underscore, and then I could call it a cube to uh, skeleton. So I know that my cube is constrained to my skeleton. And you can take the cube, hold X, click and drag anywhere in the viewport, and drag this into the child. And same with the skeleton root, but this time we drag it into parents. Now to activate the constraints, you can click uh, snap or zero. If you click snap, it's going to maintain offset. So if I select my constraint and I go to properties, um, I can see here all the constraint axes, and I can see here the offsets. They are at zero now, and if I click snap, there is now a translation offset. So my cube is now controlled by my skeleton root, but it's still in place where it was uh, when I activated the constraint. It's better to also lock it because right now I can take the cube and still move it around. And you can see in my constraint that that, that animates the translate offset. And if I rotate it, it animates the rotation offset, but you can easily have accidents when you do that and have an animator accidentally move an object that you're not supposed to. And suddenly there's a big offset between your bone and your model and that would mean that uh, when you export that into your game engine you thought your model would be like this but it, it's actually uh, snapped onto the bone so it wouldn't have this visual representation so it's better to always so either you really need that offset and you say snap and you lock so you know that it's it's set up like this and it won't be animatable or if you want that object to follow the bone one on one you can say you can click zero it's going to lock it automatically and now when I select my skeleton it controls the cube but I can't move the cube relative to that constraint this is usually the setup that you want when you want to constrain a model one on one and when you have a parent constraint you can actually add multiple parents here I'm going to add a null Increase its size and drag it here as the second parent uh, source. And that means that my cube is influenced by both objects. And in the constraints properties, you'll see those two parents uh, here. They both have a weight, so the skeleton root and the null. And I could blend that down to make the cube go all the way to the null if uh, the other one has zero weight or vice versa. So let's say my cube is at zero in the scene, so at the scene origin by default. And I have this uh, skeleton root as its parent. 
uh, you can always like turn off the the constraint uh, progressively uh, using the weight, which is accessible in the navigator or as always in the properties here. So this is the master weight for the entire constraint, and pretty much all the constraints have that. So be careful with this because uh, if you have a, a lower value and you animate your your parent, and then you want to bake the result of that animation on the cube. So I take my cube, I plot all properties, look at what's going to happen. I bake the animation of the cube, so if I disable the constraint, the cube is doing this little uh, translation here. And if I keep my parent-child uh, constraint active with still 20% influence, the cube gets a little bit closer because it's now blending 20% of the constraint with an animation underneath that's already uh, getting closer to the skeleton. So every time you would bake that, you would get closer and closer. So you want to be careful and maybe uh, disable the constraint after doing this sort of um, partial weight. Let me deactivate the constraint uh, so I can move the cube around again. And I'm going to make a position constraint this time. Again, take that parent. Root. So I'm going to snap it now. So I'm going to keep the offset. And now you can see that uh, it looks similar to the, the parent. When I move it around, when I rotate it, nothing happens because I'm just constraining the position. So it's kind of similar uh, than if I were to snap this and just uh, use the translation on my parent constraint and disable the rotation. When I move, it still follows. So until here, it, it looks similar. But now look look at what happens when I rotate. When I rotate, my cube still gets transforms. It's just just doesn't get any rotation transform. It keeps its own uh, rotation, but uh, its translation gets offset by the transform of the, the skeleton. So it's, it is different than uh, just a position constraint where when I rotate, nothing happens. And it is still different than if I add a rotation constraint. guy and say maybe zero rotation oh I inversed my uh, my uh, objects here I made the skeleton root the, the child so if you want to switch that you can uh, hold X and click drag on the root and put it as source 2 so now I have two parents and I'm gonna drag cube back into constraint object so you can quickly like reverse your constraint so okay so now when I rotate my cube rotates and stays in place and because I still have my position constraint when I move around it also moves so having a rotation and a position constraint is different than having a um, parent constraint you can also select multiple constraints in your navigator and deactivate them all at once or lock them all at once you have your classical aim constraint so you can have an aim at object, you can have a constraint object, and you can have a world up object. Zero out everything. So now my yellow skeleton is looking at my white skeleton. I can see that uh, so my yellow my white skeleton is now passing below the white skeleton. The white skeleton keeps its uh, y-axis up. So you can always edit those settings here, uh, change the aim vector, change the up vector. You can see that it, it's y right now, but if I make it be a z, so 1 on z, it's now the, the z-axis that's looking up. 
both. It's going to be an axis in between. And so for my, I, I put my cube as a world of object, but for, for this to react, um, and I animated the rotation of my cube, but it doesn't uh, react on the, the bone. That's because in my constraint, the world up type is still scene up, so it's uh, based on the scene up axis. But you can actually do object up. It's actually based on my cube uh, position. So if I have the cube going around the skeletal node like this, my skeletal node is actually trying to point like the y axis. So the up axis is trying to point towards that object. And a bit similar, you have the three point constraint. So I'm going to use uh, my yellow skeleton again. I'm going to have an origin. Let's say I take the skeleton root as the origin. I'm going to have a target. Let's say I take the white bone as a target. And I'm going to have an up for, as the cube say zero so now my yellow skeleton is trying to look at the white skeleton but its position is actually going to get influenced by the origin and uh, the app object so it's it's kind of similar to a, an aim constraint in that regard The other interesting constraint is multi-referential. If I put uh, a child as a rigid object, and I can put another one, I can put a, a third one. Now when I activate that, what it does is all the bones, all the objects that you have as rigid objects, uh, they are all parent of each other. So I can take any of those and move around and the two others will follow. And this is great if you want to have like a temporary pivot. So if I have a weapon and I want to create a temporary pivot or an alternative pivot, for example, at the tip, I can create a null, increase its size, add a multi-referential constraint constraint the carabine, constraint the null, activate that constraint, and now I can have like the weapon floating like this, or I can take the pivot and rotate it around, and so when my weapon comes down, I can have uh, this little effects here. There's another interesting constraint called mapping. So if I still put my cube as a child and my skeleton root as a parent, um, and I'm going to add these two bones here as well as the child and the parent before the source. Uh, so let's say this is going to be my parent and this is going to be my child. I'm going to say uh, zero. And you can see that what it does is um, it applies the offset between my two source objects between the cube and the root. So if I move my uh, skeleton root around, the cube still follows, but um, actually the offset between those two uh, bones, white and yellow, controls the offset between the cube and the skeleton root. Another interesting one is the range. So let's say I have my cube here at 100 in the scene, I have my skeleton root at the origin, and I have this bone here at uh, 200. And I create a range, put my cube as the child, put the uh, skeleton root as the source, and this is going to be the pooling object. And I can say snap. So what it does is when my um, skeleton node is closer than uh, 200, from the skeleton root, the cube is actually stacked onto the, the root and 
when I go beyond that 200 point, my cube starts following the, the bone. And so it's based on the distance between the bone and the, the source when you activate the constraint. So if I come closer, I deactivate and I resnap. When I now the, the the distance for the range to react is a lot shorter because I, I snapped with my uh, bone a lot uh, closer. So I think this is interesting if you want to create some kind of squash and stretch system where uh, it doesn't react below a certain um, distance and then uh, beyond a certain distance it starts reacting and, and pulling. And one of the most powerful constraints is the relation constraint. So the relation constraint is a nodal base uh, system that you can edit here in the navigator. So I'm going to take my skeleton root and here it asks if I want it as a sender or receiver. Sender is like a parent, so it's going to send out its information to other objects and receiver would be like a, a child or a slave. I want it to be a sender and my cube is going to be a receiver. So I could connect those values uh, directly, connect the rotation. So now it's similar to a rotation constraint. But I can still move the cube around because uh, the cube isn't receiving any particular information in its translation. If I do right click and say set value, I'm actually giving it a value. So now I can't move the, the cube anymore because um, the relation constraint overrides its transform and dictates its translation. I can actually choose to have uh, the translation of the skeleton roots. And I could also constrain the scale if I want. So, so far it's similar to a parent constraint, but I can do a lot more with uh, the relation. I could uh, do some, some additions. So I could say, uh, okay, it's a translation of the skeleton root plus translation of uh, this bone here, sender, translation, translation, and then I can uh, plug the result here, the translation of the cube. So now it has two links. Uh, so when you plug a new link, you want to right click and say disconnect, and it's going to remove the older link. So now it's taking effect from both uh, objects. Uh, I made an addition of the vectors. So I'm in vector here. There are several categories. There's uh, Boolean, converters, so that's to convert from number to vector, vector to number, uh, etc. I can make some logic as well if condition uh, is greater than is equal to you have uh, numbers so it just floats so there are lots of options here <clears throat> if I take the damp position from the vector category I can take the vector so the position of my uh, skeleton root plug it here and I can add some damping set some values here as well maximum 800 acceleration 600 speed maybe and it's real time so when I move that my cube uh, catches up you have an option here to say play mode so it's not going to react when you move but it's going to re react when you play back the animation and I could actually bake that uh, animation so in F curves we can say translation and rotation and say uh, plot selected properties so now I actually plotted that movement and if I disable my relation constraint, I see that my cube has keys. It's actually playing some of the little dampening and, and spring effects. 